I guess in my opinion, where we sit today, it's a lot easier to raise the capital. Because so many people want to get into this. It's new and it's exciting. From Bumminit Media, it's the MJ Bulls Podcast, a show about raising cannabis capital. I'm Dan Humiston, and on today's show, Bridge West, the first exclusive cannabis CPA firm in the world CEO, Jim Marty, talks accounting for raising cannabis capital. Hey, Jim. Thanks for joining us today. Glad to do it. I don't know if you remember, but you were one of the first people I ever met in the cannabis industry. Really? Yeah. Well, you spoke at my first show in the Hard Rock Convention Center in Las Vegas. 2014, the first Cannabis World Congress Business Expo was at the Hard Rock, and you were one of my speakers, and that's when we met. Well, I'm really excited to talk to you about accounting and raising money in the cannabis space. But before I do, let's talk a little bit about your company, Bridge West CPAs. I didn't realize this, but you guys were the first cannabis solely CPA firm in the world. Yeah, I think we still might be. So your main practice is cannabis business. I see you have like over 200 cannabis companies that you work with. Yes. And more every day. Yeah. I can briefly tell the story of how we got there. Sure. Yeah, in 2009, I was one of the few CPAs in Colorado that accepted cannabis clients. And by 2014, my cannabis practice was bigger than my 30-year-old CPA firm that I started in 1984. And there was about 10 of us, so we had to stop taking on new clients. But then I split my practice in 2015. Another firm in town took over all of our non-cannabis business, and I put all the cannabis business under Bridge West. And designed Bridge West to be acquired, which it was. We were acquired by a large CPA firm January 1st of 2017. And that's what's enabled us to really expand nationally and accept clients all over the country. So we have clients in pretty much every state that has some form of legal cannabis. And I just looked at your website and I'm like, I mean, you have well over 200 people in that firm just focusing on cannabis. Well, our total headcount is about 110, uh, including our parent company. And you're right, we have over 200 cannabis clients, license holders nationwide. And we're doing a lot of very sophisticated work, mergers and acquisitions, due diligence, audits, financial statement preparation, and of course, income tax returns. Really, the topic that I want to talk to you about and what most of our listeners are interested to hear today is if a cannabis company is raising capital, why should they bring on a CPA firm or when should they bring on a CPA firm? A good place to bring in a CPA firm like ours is at the letter of intent area or the awarding of a license and really just start planning it out. You know, what are you going to be your cost accounting uh, models? What are you going to be your prices at retail? How much profit is there? and then uh, apply tax rates to it, uh, knowing that you can't take all your deductions and make sure you have an after-tax cash flow. What's most important to an investor is the after-tax cash flow. So the only reason anybody should invest in a cannabis business, if they get a return on their investment commensurate with the risk that they're taking. Companies raising capital, or they're in the process of putting everything together, At what stage do you advise them to bring in a CPA firm to help them set that up? Yeah, for a company that's pre-revenue and raising capital, maybe they've been awarded a license and they are not operational yet. A good place to bring in a CPA firm is to study the after-tax cash flows. So you forecast out three to five years. Bridge West is very good at understanding cost accounting, what it costs to grow cannabis, what your cost should be for extracted products, and then ultimately what you can sell it for, either at wholesale or retail. And then you bring in your expenses, apply the income tax to it, which some fairly sophisticated calculations because not all of the expenses are deductible, and try to forecast out a after-tax cash flow and then line that up with the investment so the investor, the potential investor, can get an idea of what their return will be 
for investing in a cannabis business. When they're raising capital, I know at various levels, whether it's in early rounds like the seed round, I suspect the information that's in their financials is probably less detailed than it would be as we move into series A's and series B rounds. Maybe you can talk just a little bit about the different levels of scrutiny that the financials take as they move through the different levels. Sure. Well, the larger the capital raise, the more sophisticated the investor and the more details that they're going to want to see, including potentially audited financial statements once the company's operational. But it really depends on what the investors want. I guess in my opinion, where we sit today, it's a lot easier to raise the capital because so many people want to get into this. It's new and it's exciting. So it's in some ways easier to raise the capital than it is to provide the investor with a good return on that investment. You've talked a lot about companies that actually touch the plant. How about some of the ancillary organizations that don't touch the plant? I know a lot of investors are skittish about investing in anything that touches the plant, but are really, really bullish on companies that do not touch the plant. What have been your experiences with those type of companies? Yes, well, the classic non-cannabis business that's very closely related is the real estate. Marijuana is a very real estate intensive business. You need real estate for the cultivation. You need real estate for extracted products manufacturing. You need real estate for the retail. So another way to go is to go in and buy the real estate and become the landlord. That's a great way to make an investment. And the reason I like it, among others, is should the marijuana business fail, then you've still got the real estate that you could lease to somebody else or sell. So that's a classic not touch the plant. Would you advise any of your entrepreneurs to include real estate in their deals? Well, like I said, you're going to have real estate one way or the other. It's either going to be leased or purchased. Um, You can purchase it and put it into a separate company that becomes the landlord. Jim Marty, who's the CEO of Bridgewest CPAs, can reach Jim J Marty J M A R T Y at Bridge West CPAs with an S dot com. Yes, and uh, we're very easy to find on the internet. Either my name, Jim Marty, or our CPA firm, Bridge West. And probably the most impressive aspect of what they do, I think we touched on this, but we really just glossed over it, is that you work in every state. That's a huge benefit. Right, every state that has legal cannabis. So we're in all 30 states. Well, that's a huge benefit to companies, especially as the regulations start to lax and and we start to see companies working in different states. It's nice to work with the same firm. Anybody needs some guidance, Jim's the the guy to call. We'll have his information on the mjbulls.com website. Jim, thank you very much for being with us today and great, great information. Thank you, Dan. Thanks for, uh, yeah, thanks for interviewing me and have a great evening. Yeah, you too. Thanks, Jim. Thanks for listening to the MJ Bulls podcast. To learn more about today's guests or to apply to be a guest, visit our website at mjbulls.com. And if you like our show, give us a review on iTunes. Today's show was produced by Bumminant Media. I'm Dan Humiston, and you've been listening to the MJ Bulls podcast.